Hey guys, this is Kazu, and welcome to Large K Podcast. We're at episode 44 now, which is really exciting. Uh, lately, I've just been struggling with posting things consistently. I got sick a few days ago, which sucked. I was at home all day, and I could have focused on working on a podcast or some other stuff, but I just couldn't do it for some reason. And with all the personal shit combined, it just gets the best of you. I felt overwhelmed, and at one point, I guess I just had to rest and clear my head a little bit. Now I'm back on my feet, and I'm ready to start this up again. And I just want to say thank you for your patience, and for this new episode, I interviewed my friend Chris for his project, Moo. Last year, I interviewed him for Repeated Measures. However, Repeated Measures is no more, and now it's Moo. Which means that this is the first ever Large K podcast update episode. I don't really plan on doing something like this unless there's a big change in the artist and for Chris his mindset has changed, his musical direction has changed, and his artist name has changed. And he has left his old moniker and at the end of last year he released I See Negus. Why did he change his name to Moo? You'll find out on this interview. This is Large K Podcast with Moo. like you rearrange your room in like such a completely different way like it's yeah it's it's more complete now i could i could this definitely tell. the temple now <laughs> yeah i know right it's like you got the whole setup you it feels more focused i feel like that's would you yeah. would you say so yeah yeah that's definitely more what i actually need <laughs> yeah that you got is necessary no, that's good man well well first of all i just want to say like it's crazy because like it's been about maybe like the last time we saw each other was like doing like this interview was like probably like about 10 months ago or so and i don't know like how, how do you how do you feel now like it's i mean how, how, are, you, how are you doing today in general like <clears throat> hmm. i think now I just want to experiment more. Uh huh. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> I could I could see that. And also, you also said that like your mind has changed so much since then. Like yeah. And how so? Do you think? My perception of mm, a lot of things mostly most most uh importantly i guess or most relevant not important but relevant yeah would just be my perception of online the online universe right you know it's changed in a way where now i feel like it's just a. Mm, I just call it the, the digital wasteland. Mm -hmm. And everyone's scavenging. Right. For information on it. Yeah. I and see. And playing the role of a digital identity. On these. Un. Uh, uncontrollable mass tech 
companies and corporate websites. Right. And I felt the type of way about it forever, but I never incorporated that into my work. And now I feel it's inescapable. It's just everywhere. Yeah. And so why not just fuck around a little bit Mm -hmm. and just uh, maybe try to get other people to see it this way. Right, yeah. So you kind of want like a a completely new image and like also like you kind of want to approach it more differently now. Uh, I think there's no image now. That's the difference. It's like prior... I think every every there's like a few different types of uh, ways to present someone's identity online yeah and it seems like a lot of people are presenting some version of their true identity and I think prior I have fallen into that trap too. Right. And why should anyone be selling you or promoting to you their life or supposed life when it's supposed to be about music? Hmm. Yeah. So, and it's supposed to be about non-realities and alternate realities and alternate dimensions and that's what all music is about but it's just been like bastardized into this like fucking identity game and everyone's in it on some level if you use it at all so it's like why not just escape that? Escape the mm-hmm. whole, like, real world entirely when you go online. Like, why? Right. Why not? Oh, I see. And I think everyone can do that. Yeah. And should do that. Based on, like, uh, this you know site that you were like showing me around like you know i i was actually like wondering to myself like why did you like call yourself moo and then like now that i like looked at it like i just now realized it but you know Mm. moo in chinese characteristic or in japanese it means nothing and yeah and just kind of based on what you said about like going with like no image and like make music as like a presence is that why you decided to go with that name so I had another name, a whole nother concept entirely really planned, and then I just ditched it like had to had to change from that, and it evolved into this in like a five minute period when I was so certain that it was going to be that other shit. then I don't even know how I stumbled on the word right, but I am uh like I have it pretty deep interest in buddhism right it wasn't uh, a word i had seen before but i had known this other word called shoshin which is like the beginner's mind yeah and mushin is like the opposite of that and i just never heard of mushin until it's fucking randomly i don't know i was just sitting there somehow stumbled on it i was like oh shit i'm gonna do this instead right but it's very similar aesthetically to what i land but maybe like a few layers deeper in the fuckery hmm I see and like I want to also get into you know just like how we did with um well actually before I ask this next question um now going with like Mu um I know it's a transition from your old like repeated measures um was it hard for you to leave that um uh hold on yeah go for it (laughs) (laughs) all right the cat 
guys come and join us. All right. Here, I could, I could re-ask that question. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, oh, just actually, you're just asking, uh, was it hard to stop yeah. doing repeated measures? Yeah. Um, and I would say, nah. Because it had got into this, this zone where it was like, I either continue on the same path with the universe that I'm creating mm -hmm. or I start something uh, new like start it's like the path I was on was already so far from where it started yeah sonically that yeah it's almost like not even the same thing anymore like the the material that I just released uh, in November, I see Negus. Yeah. When I was compiling that, I kind of just realized that this was like the reset, like music, and I had been wanting to start a new project for a while anyway, and I had hinted a lot about it. And within the Repeated Measures universe, there's all these stories about leaving the dimension that we're in yeah. and entering other dimensions and going out into space and shit. And it's all like symbolism and metaphors for exploring your mind. Your mind is the ultimate void. Your mind is the ultimate cosmos. Yeah. So like, it's all really talking about that. And what does it mean to leave the dimension of your own mind other than to evolve and like bring in new parts of identity and new parts of expression and shit. Mm -hmm. And so it had been planned for a while, I would say. And it was like, it was surprising if anything, because I hadn't planned to start a new project for like another two years or something. Yeah. And I was planning on like releasing you know, albums along that time to, like, tell that, to tell the end of the story. Yeah. But now it's, like, just spawned, uh, like, suddenly. Mm. It kind of just, like, happened out of nowhere. Like, I don't even know. I didn't think about it too much. Yeah. No. Just one day, I was just like, yeah, it's time. Yeah. I'm fucking launch the new shit. Yeah, time for transition, right? What? Yeah. Yeah. Why did you call the the new project the uh, I see Negus? I'm familiar. Mm. I'm actually f I'm familiar with the term Negus. It's like a, a sovereign of Ethiopia or something like that, or like mm -hmm. or king, right? Like that's kind yeah. Of like Kendrick Lamar mentioned it before, and mm -hmm. I was wondering like why did you call it I see Negus? Yeah. So this is an album about a feeling and. The whole feel of the album is like just kind of chilled out, don't give a fuck kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Not like in an aggressive don't give a fuck. It's like such a, yeah, just kind of just don't give a fuck. Like that's the vibe <laughs> of the album. And like in a good way, you know, like you're just chilling. Yeah. So people, it's like, I've always, I've always liked to just have some like fuckery with all the track titles and stuff and I thought it would be funny to just like do a pun mm. <laughs> yeah like I don't know it's just it's a pun on making fire music <laughs> it's just cold man it's the icy negus <laughs> but it's also like icy I mean the cover is literally a diamond encrusted Pharaoh yeah <laughs> on a blizzard pyramid background yeah so really nice cover yeah yeah you know it's like a meme really <laughs> it's just like it's yeah I'm trying to it's hinting I'm trying to hint on a lot of shit yeah and uh yeah just 
there was a I there were like a couple tracks on there where I looked at the name and kind of I found it really curious. There's a song called Kokobuncho Street Brawl oh, yeah. and Gajin Smash. And I is that related to your experience in Japan? Possibly. It, it is actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't want to get into the details of that story. Yeah. I get you. But that was a wild one. <laughs> oh, yeah, it certainly was. Yeah. So that track, those two tracks are telling that story. Mm. Uh, people can use their imagination. Yeah. And I think that's, that's another element that I'm trying to do with this project much more than repeated measures. It's just uh, having uh, the albums be presented as a world yeah. or like as a... Mm, like as something that you imagine almost like reading a book and you're imagining pictures in your mind as you're reading yeah I'm trying to I've always tried to use like track titles and shit to give people these images but yeah I'm trying to do it in a much more direct way now yeah where I, I really want people to fucking close their eyes and just like imagine what it would be like to have like all this jewelry on that's ice cold and shit and like you're literally out in a frozen desert like you're yeah. just actually there and that's that's the goal you know yeah when you were talking about how repeated measures um before was like kind of all about space and like kind of the more atmospheric element of it and when i yeah. listened to the the IC Negus pro IC Negus album, it, it feels like you said like I don't know if if it's from like that don't give a fuck element, but it's yeah. very it's definitely minimal. I feel like it's, yeah. it's more minimal focused and, and yeah, like, that's what I thought was really cool about it. I made a lot of those beats in the library. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, when I was living in Japan. Um, I was like teaching. English and in between classes I was sneaking my EMX into the library with headphones and like really chilling in there yeah I made like a lot of shit in that library yeah uh probably like over a hundred patterns on the EMX wow and then those have become like my last few releases Mm. It's just all that library and like of course my apartment and shit too but yeah and then in long beach now right uh over last year but mostly in that library dude <laughs> that's crazy so that laid back vibe is like has a lot to do with the environment as well right but uh yeah there was intent it was intentionally mm -hmm. minimal to give this like I don't know, it's almost like, yeah, you could throw more, but I don't even care enough to throw another fucking layer. I'm just gonna leave it at two cent sounds, fuck it. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's not overly melodic, there's like few things, like, you know, kind of coming in, coming in and yeah. out, and like... Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's also just like about being cold like that, like, right. just not, not throwing that, uh, Enter, almost like making it feel like it's so easy or something is like the vibe you know making it sound easy like yeah making it sound easy to make easy to mimic and shit yeah but then it's actually not because the machine is still complex and even the minimal sounds are not necessarily straightforward to make yeah so it's it's you know it's uh, kind of talking about the music more than it's like mu half about the music style half about this like imagery or some shit mm -hmm. or the imagery helps understand the music style I don't know how it really works you know right <laughs> I know there's some sort of like relationship on some level because when you're making the music you're just making the music I'm not thinking about any of this shit yeah then after you listen to it and you're just like the fuck is this what the fuck did i make like, <laughs> what am i listening to yeah and then over time it's just like you start picturing shit you start making jokes and you're just like oh shit like 
Yeah, this one sounds like I'm just standing on top of like an icy ass pyramid. Like, shout outs. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, the cat's mad at me. <laughs> I don't like when I say that. <sighs> so, yeah, it's not like a conscious effort. Yeah. It's just like, just makes it more fun or some shit. Yeah, I gotcha. Mm. And as, you know, now, like, as Moo, like, has your, like, uh, perspective on like how you approach performance have changed as well yeah you know I uh, I genuinely don't want to uh, it, I don't want it to have anything to do with me right. and it's something I learned from floods actually yeah um, he had he and I were talking about just music and just life and shit you know just whatever yeah and he like brought up that he f doesn't think there should be like even a like a person uh, like how to say there's sh the, no one should be even thinking about the person on the stage right he's just saying like you should just be like invisible like they just have the fucking music be coming out right and I'm like yeah I mean he said it he said it better than this but that's his basic point, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, that, I, I remember that day, you know? And that day really influenced me too, because I had always felt a type of way about that aspect of it, and I never really liked that aspect of it. Right. And then, I fucked around with a mask before, and like a lot of the homies fuck around with masks and shit. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I just want to fuck around with that too, and also have it be... Um, I mean, it is part of the 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 universe. Yeah. That I'm trying to present. It's almost like a a necessary aspect. Yeah. It, it coincides with the music and everything. Yeah, yeah. I see. So it's not just about hidden identity. It also is just like it is. It is. <laughs> It is the project, you know. Right. Yeah. It is. It the project couldn't exist if it if I wasn't. So you want people like this. So you want people to like focus more on like the music instead of like the person that made it. Like I don't know if I'm catching it. Yeah, on maybe. the entire presentation, like of course, if I'm wearing a mask and like, you know, not looking like, quote unquote normal yeah it, it will draw attention to me as a as an object that is in yeah. the room yeah but this object is now a part of the overall experience right. of the sound right instead of it being the sound and then a human being involved in presenting it to you right now you're just being presented with an entire thing it's, right. You know, it's one experience. Yeah. And I think it makes the music translate better. True. And it brings people into the world that I want to create. Yeah, because you're you're creating your universe at that moment, and you're trying to yeah kind of invite people into it, like you know, just be like, hey, this is what I. Have. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really nice when you can work with good visual artists yeah like uh working with paul plastic and gator yeah and these dudes have like really sick setup together when they do the mm. team setup yeah and yeah shout outs to them shout outs to the whole crew shout outs anubis yeah <laughs> 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 yeah has um I was wondering, like, now that, like, just, just kind of, like, inter by interviewing you right now, like, I already know, I already see that, like, your perspective on everything has changed, but, like, not only within music, but, like, do you feel like it has, like, changed the way you look at daily life as well? Oh, yeah. I've been plugged into, uh, I've been, like, kind of anti uh 
you know, mega wasteful corporation operations and consumerism for most of my life, like on a conscious level, but then in a behavioral level, it's like always on, in some ways, like you can't escape participating. And even when you are consciously aware of like how you're contributing to it and perpetuating it. Yeah. When I was younger, for sure, I was like way deeper in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt like repeated measures was a relic of this time in because I started when I was only like 19 or 18. Yeah. And it's from that time in my life when I was still more like not quite as active in my like not not reflecting my beliefs in my actions as fluidly yeah and easily as I feel comfortable doing now you could say so it's like yeah just mm, just uh it's more not more natural yeah but also initially it's like more difficult or something if it's unfamiliar yeah, yeah, I gotcha. What's in terms of like the music um, right now? Like, do you currently um, are you currently working on anything new, or like maybe like possibly release something for this year? Or yeah, so uh, I just released two uh, kind of like I don't know. I guess they're albums, mixtapes, whatever. Uh, Icy Negus and Feel. Yeah, and I feel. They're like complementary to each other because Icy Negus is about not feeling anything. And this is like relating back to everything I'm talking about. It's like the. Mm, you can react to this culture and mm -hmm. you can react to your understanding of it, at least my personal understanding, and I don't think I'm alone in it. And maybe when I was younger, I felt more alone in it. So I just kind of was like, oh, I'll just fucking go along with this bullshit. And now I've gotten older. I've met more people who are like, yo, you see this shit? I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. I've been seeing this shit too. Yeah. And like now it's, you feel a little more comfortable just being like, fuck this. So it's like, uh, the icy negus is on this, on this level is just, and this is like the true message because everything I'm trying to discuss and critique is this digital wasteland that we scavenge through and we should all be very aware of the information overload taking place and how it contributes to like your ability to stay focused and your ability to reach your goals and shit right um and I would, everyone should be more aware of yeah of how it influences them and society as a whole right but anyways to finish I've like cliffhangered the point twice now. So <laughs> the point is you can react to all that by just being iced out. Like I uh, smoke a shit ton of weed, just be fucking feel nothing, just fucking black out, do whatever you gotta do to not think about it mm -hmm. and just go on with your fucking life. Right. Or you can actually take reality as you see it whatever reality is to you, if there's anything in it that's got you down, you can just let yourself feel it. Yeah. It's like, just give into it. And that's what feel is about. It's like the opposite reaction. It's like trying to awaken a feeling in you instead of trying to suppress one. Right, yeah. So the new, the new material um, is like also a pair like that. Yeah. Uh, a pair of concepts and all I can really say is one of them is kind of like a glitched out industrial world and it's very uh, heavy and the companion yeah. is very natural and organic sounding and light yeah. and bassy but smooth and it's more of a maybe like a 3D rendered world instead of a pixelated like 
lo-fi world. <laughs> uh, that's about all I can say for now. I see. Yeah, you don't want to give away too much, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I made that one. I made the majority of those two in Japan as well. Those two, Icy Negus, um, the Lost Tapes. Yeah. Uh, and Bin of Measures. Yeah. The the closing releases of the repeated measures projects all that was made in japan and these two albums that i have yet to drop are the actual two albums that i went to japan to create yeah so i'm very excited to be finishing those man I'm like fuck me yeah i don't know what it is but like to me it's like um like looking at you now you seem to be more um i know i know your move but like at the same time i feel like you're more um happy or like you're you're more like I, I just i just feel like you know with the with the concept of mood like it's more spontaneous instead of just kind of overthinking things and like yeah i feel like you're i feel like you're like released or something like it's yeah it's very freeing yeah um i feel like you know in line with everything i'm saying uh i felt that measures was caught up in industry bullshit hmm. and who wants no part in that shit? Yeah. Because I don't exist. I don't exist anyway. <laughs> Only the music does. <laughs> right. And, uh... Yeah, keep it that way. Yeah. Do you miss, uh... Do you miss Japan? Yes and no. I... I miss the time alone. And I miss... Uh the freaking like mystical forest and shit out there yeah and i miss the, my friends i had out there of course uh, yeah shout outs bridge shout outs evison skateboards fuck <laughs> i'm allowed to do i'm allowed to do internet ass shout outs yeah go for it tight i wish people could see that i've got double hang loose signs right now that's how you know i'm actually down with the shit <laughs> <laughs> no, I I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, I think I pretty much um, you know, went through like all all the questions. But like, I I'm just like one thing that I just want to say is that like I'm just pretty glad that like you know this this is actually the first ever large gay podcast update interview. So like, oh uh, nice. Yeah. So knowing, <laughs> just kind of coming back to you like the second time and knowing that like you know you're already doing well like it's. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, you know. It's yeah, I was really uh, happy to have the opportunity to share these ideas and shit, and yeah, I'm thankful to you for providing the platform. Of course, man. Always like, I mean, known you for about a year, and like, I feel like we get along pretty well. So you know, it's just it's nice to know that Moo is doing doing his shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. It it's it feels good too. I feel free feel artistically like if you don't exist then you can make whatever you want because there's no precedent right so it's very freeing in that sense too true true and uh i feel like i'm chipping away at my goal of freeing people from the digital wasteland yeah and i'm just gonna keep chipping away at that goal yeah until we're all flush with enough content to not need to uh, scavenge and forge the wasteland of information for good releases and content. True, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, before we end the show, like, um, I actually added this uh, new segment on my podcast, and, um, you know, around the time, you're, you're one of the early interviews that I've ever done um, when I first started Large K and, um, and I actually never done this with you before, but like, I was thinking we should do this. Um, it's called this, this, that, that I'm just going to be throwing you some like, you know, short questions and like, all right. maybe just answer it <laughs> however way you want. Um, all you right. know, for example, um, cats or dogs? Oh, I gotta say cats for now. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm I'm not saying that just because there's a cat in here, but like, but you know it's a, it's it's one of those things that I ask. Um, yeah, I switched to cats. Switched to cats. Used to be dogs. Muffy changed my life. 
Yeah. Um, if you could go anywhere in in, uh, in the world, uh, where'd you want to go? Think about that one for a sec. Ooh, it's supposed to be fast though, huh? Like uh, that rapid fire. Oh, you don't have to. Be okay, super no rapid, rapid fire. All right, all right. Anywhere in the whole world? Yeah. If you if you could go anywhere, where'd you want to go? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I could go anywhere. I think. I'm like, I've got like three places right now. Yeah, say it out. Three locations. Well, it's like, I can't really be too specific. I'd want to go to a place, though, that has like icy caverns. Like, if there is such a place, like Ice Valley, kind of Ice <laughs> Gorge situation. Yeah. If I could see that, that would be epic. Yeah. Maybe like that's in antarctica or alaska or some shit i don't think only like scientists are in antarctica uh -huh. pretty sure so maybe maybe that's where you gotta go where they're like mining the fucking billion year old air to fucking prove global warming right who knows I'm, I'm, i bet there is a place like that man like <laughs> some icy cavern you know what i'm saying um let's see uh, flylo or mad lib all right, man, I I don't really listen to either of them these days, um, but Flylo has a special place in my heart, so yeah, I'd have to say, I'd have to say that. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, and here's the here's the last one. Um, this is just like fill in a blank, and it'll be um, Moo is. Not. I like that. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah. Well, I just want to say, uh, Moo, thanks for being a part of this Large K podcast. Yeah, and, dude. And I'm really happy to be doing this once again. Um, Me too. And uh, you know, let's let's finish it off with an icy track. What do you what would you suggest? Burr. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's literally a track called Burr. Tight. We'll go with that. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. guys that was moo be sure to check out his album icy negus and follow him on his social media 
I'll put the detail in the description box below. But yeah, thanks for listening to Large Gate Podcast. And once again, I'm Kazu. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.